Hi there. So in this video, I want to talk about what rational exponents are and how to deal with them. So if you are watching this video, you will have already needed to have been introduced to regular whole number exponents, things like a squared or x squared, whatever you want to do here for the base. Um, if you don't know um, how to deal with those, watch my other video on exponents. There's an introduction to exponents and how to deal with them. Um, here we're going to talk about where the exponent is a fraction. Um, they call them rational because there's a fraction is a ratio of two numbers. So something like a to the one half, or I mean, you could I'm using a to just stand in for some number, meaning I don't care what the value is because I'm just trying to demonstrate what the one half exponent means. Um, so a could be any number, right? But if you wanted to do a real number, we could think of four to the one half. And what does that actually mean? Does it mean, right, to take the number, well, let's, if we had four squared, <clears throat> that means do four times four, right? So what does four to the one half mean? Does it mean to write half of a four and not finish it and then you're done? No, of course not. That's ridiculous, right? So what on earth does something raised to the one half power even mean? Well, let's go back to here, here with this A because I want to just talk about numbers in general. Well, first I'll tell you what it means, and then I'll tell you why it means that, because it might be a little weird as to why it would be that. It turns out that if you have one half as an exponent, what it is telling you to do is take the square root of the base. So A is the number being raised to the exponent, we call it the base. So something raised to the one half power really means take the square root of it. Now. If that's annoying to you, like why would that be the case? Um, and anyways, why would we have an alternate way of writing this, right? You, you might be saying this square root symbol was perfectly fine. Why do we need another way of writing it? Well, it's just, this is all it is. An exponent is just, um, you know, oh, sorry, a fractional exponent is the square root. It's not like we're trying to come up with an alternate way. It just is an alternate way, right? It's, it turned out that this operation is already explained by doing exponents, but maybe we have reasons for wanting to just use that symbol instead. So anyways, let's talk about why it's the square root of A. <clears throat> so I wanna, hopefully you can follow my logic here. If you had the number A, where A is you know, any, some number, right? Um, and you just, just the number. Um, is that number being raised to an exponent? Hopefully, you're saying yes right now, right? It's, it's being raised to the first power. We don't write the one because it's implied, right? If you, if you see a number like five and it's just hanging out there, it's not just five. It's actually being raised to the first power. We don't do anything when we're raising it to the first power, but that information is still important for coming to in conclusions when you're trying to prove things. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to prove that this <clears throat> equals that. So, if we have a being equal to a to the first, how can we connect that to what we're talking about up here with fractional exponents? Well, we can do a little bit of trickery here. We can say that one here, this one in the exponent, is actually, I'll write in parentheses, one half plus one half. Aha. Now we've introduced the fractions as exponents, but this does not look like that, right? Well, it's fine. I'm not saying that that equals the square root of a. I couldn't do that, right? You can't have a to the one half being the square root of a and a to the one half plus one half being equal to the square root of a. So what am I getting at here then? Well, um, I'm about to do something that won't make sense unless you've watched or, or watched my video on exponent properties or are aware of exponent properties, but do this off to the side. There's an exponent property that says if you have a base raised to some power times the same base raised to a power where B and C here could be any number, they could be the same number, we don't care what the value is, we're just trying to show the relationship that's happening here. Um, you can simplify this as writing A, just the base, to the sum of the exponents. So the sum of the exponents, well here we have a situation where we're summing exponents, right? So what can I, 
how can I utilize this information to help me here? Well, I can look at the other side of the, the equal sign here. I have a to the b plus c. I here I have a to the 1 half plus 1 half. What's on the other side? Well, I have a to one exponent times a raised to the exponent, other exponent. Here, the two exponents are the same, but that's fine. We can still utilize that property. So that means that a to the 1 half plus 1 half is equivalent to a to the 1 half times a to the 1 half. OK, all these term, uh, expressions here are all written um, in relation to one another with an equal sign. That means if, if a is equal to a to the first, and a to the first is equal to a to the 1 half plus 1 half, and so on, any pair of these expressions are equal to each other. So let's cut out the middle stuff here, and let's just say that a to the 1 half <clears throat> times a to the 1 half is equivalent to a. So let's, let's investigate. What do we have here? We have a number, a quantity, a to the 1 half. Being multiplied by it, there's a, there's a multiplication symbol here that I kind of uh, got lost there. Um, a number, a quantity being multiplied by itself, equaling some value. Where have we seen that before? Well, we've seen that when we find the area of a square, right? If you wanted to find the area of this square, you would have to take the length of the square and multiply it by the length of the other dimension. If it's a square, it's the same value. If it's a rectangle, you have two different values, L and W. But here, we see that L squared is equal to the area. <clears throat> but if we wanted to go the other way around, if we already knew the area, and we wanted to find what the length was, right? we would use the square root option or operation, I should say. The square root of A area is asking us, hey, if, there's a, if there was a square and the area of that square was this A here, whatever value that is, then what is the length of the square, right? So the square root of capital A should tell us what L is. Well, <coughs> here I have two numbers be multiplied together, just like here I have two, you know, lengths be multiplied together and equals some value. When you multiply two numbers together, the same numbers, I should say, two numbers that are the same together, and it equals a value, you can think of that value as being the area of a square. Therefore, if the area here, let's get rid of all this, I don't want this to be confusing, but we're gonna use the same idea, let's just use this square. If the area were a, lowercase a, that value, whatever it is, if I wanted to find the length of this square, I would take the square root of a. Here though, I know what it is. It's saying a to the 1 half times a to the 1 half equals a. Therefore, the length of this must be a to the 1 half. This is a to the 1 half. So the square root of little a must be a little a to the 1 half power. There's your equivalence right there. There's the proof for a to the 1 half being um, the square root of a. So <clears throat> that is why a to the 1 half is equal to the square root of a. Now, that's not the only possible rational exponent. You can have literally an infinite number of them. You can have an infinite different um, types of, of rational exponents. Let's look at some others really quick. If I had a, let's do a different color here, uh, that's good, a to the one-third, what does that mean? Well, it means to take the cube root of a. Why? Well, it's actually the same exact rationale that we used here, except instead of using a square, you use a cube. If you had a cube, um, <clears throat> right, and you were looking at its volume, how do you find the volume of a cube? Well, you multiply the length of the cube times the depth of the cube times the height of the cube. But 
if it's a cube, by definition, those three values, the length, the width, and the height, are all exactly the same. So if there's a volume of this cube, <clears throat> had a length L, L to the third power, or aka L cubed, that's why we even call it L cubed, equals V. But what if we knew V and we wanted to find the length? Well, we would do the cube root of V, not the square root, the cube root of V, and that would give you L. Well, <clears throat> if you do the same exercise that I did up here with A, starting with A to the first, and then splitting that one up into a one-third plus one-third plus one-third, and then using that property to write it A to the one-third times A to the one-third times A to the one-third, you would find the same exact answer that we got here, that the cube root of A, cube root of A is just equal to A to the one third power. Okay, so then that means that a to the one fourth is just telling you to do the fourth root of a. Um, a to the one fifth, that just means to take the fifth root of a, and so on. a to the one one millionth is take the millionth root of a. It doesn't matter how big the denominator of that fraction is. Oops. <clears throat> Okay, um, so that's all I'm going to talk about uh, in, as far as this video goes in terms of uh, um, rational exponents. But notice that so far I've only showed you what happens when you have a 1 in the numerator of that uh, um, exponent, right? But what if it wasn't a 1? So, for example, if I had a to the 2 thirds, how do we deal with that? What does that 2 mean? We're going to see that in the next video.